These days, everybody seems to be a photographer, and cameras are no longer simply in the hands of experts, but on every digital device. With that in mind, I'd like us to explore a little bit of the origins of photography so we can fully understand the capabilities of the medium today. So I'd like to talk a little bit about photography and where it's come and where it's going. Here are some images by freelance designer Zach Bush with some elaborate digital manipulations. Before we can go here with digital photography, it's important to understand the roots of it all. The origins of photography can be traced back to the camera obscura, or dark room, as translated from the Latin, which was used from around 400 BC and first mentioned by Aristotle. It was a darkened room with a small hole in one wall. The image would be projected through this tiny hole upside down on a screen, and an artist could sketch or draw it. It was used by da Vinci and other artists to create drawings with perfect perspective. Fast forward to 1826, when Frenchman Joseph Niesifor Niepce created the first photograph by adding a piece of light-sensitive material to the camera obscura. He called the process heliography, meaning from the sun. Although it's a bit hard to tell, the picture is of a barn and some buildings. Note that the light is on both the left and right sides of the image due to the eight hour long exposure. Still using the camera obscura, French painter and chemist Louis Daguerre photographed a street scene in Paris using a new process called the daguerreotype that allowed the image to be recorded and preserved. Again, the exposure is very long, 10 minutes or so. So the only people recorded are standing relatively still at the Schustein booth. Daguerreotypes became very popular, especially for portraits, but were one of a kind and could not be reproduced. Portrait sessions often took many minutes, which helps to explain why no one is ever smiling in the pictures. Note how crisp and detailed the pictures are. Anyone who was famous in 1839 had their likeness captured for succeeding generations. The one on the right is a portrait of the poet Emily Dickinson in 1846 when she was only 17 years old. The precursor to modern photographic printing came with Henry Fox Talbot's invention of the callotype in 1841. Daguerreotypes created a single positive image, whereas callotypes made a negative, allowing for unlimited reproductions. The images were not as sharp as daguerreotypes, as the negatives were made of paper and took on some of the fuzziness of the materials. In 1855, Englishman Thomas Fenton photographed the Crimean War using yet another process called wet plate collodion. Fenton's portable darkroom, a converted wine merchant's wagon, would have been cramped, hot, and fume-filled. It served not just as a darkroom, storing five large cameras, 700 glass plates, and barrels of chemicals. It also carried his personal supply of preserved meats, biscuits, wine, beer, and horse fodder. The wet plate collodion method that Fenton used during this trip meant that his 10 by 8 glass plates had to be hand painted with a mixture of gun cotton soaked in ether and alcohol. The plate was then washed with distilled water and silver nitrate to make it light sensitive. The treated plates then had to be exposed and developed when still wet for the optimum. Results. Another interesting thing about these photographs is that there has been speculation that Fenton removed and or added the cannonballs to the road in the images on the right. So here's the cannonballs in the road and here's the cannonballs that are not in the road. Creating a photograph that wasn't technically the truth or the first known example of manipulation in a news photograph. The more likely explanation is that the army recycled the cannonballs and moved them off of the road after he took the first picture. In the 1860s, Matthew Brady, along with Timothy of O'Sullivan and many other assistants, takes photographs of the American Civil War using glass plates that can be printed on paper. The pictures show camp scenes as well as the aftermath of war, but battle scenes are noticeably missing. Action shots were not possible with the slowness of early photographic techniques. Brady is credited as being the father of photojournalism. Even in these early stages, the power of the photograph was apparent. Abraham Lincoln credits this photograph from 1860, as well as the Cooper Union speech, as making him president of the United States. As Lincoln is quoted as saying, the photograph dispelled the opposition base on the rumors of my long, ungainly figure, large feet, clumsy hanks, and long, gaunt beard, making me into a man of human aspect and dignified bearing. In 1860, the Eastman Dry Plate Company was established, which eventually became Eastman Kodak. They could mass-produce gelatin dry plates, allowing for images to be made and then processed later, unlike the wet plate process. 
This is the invention that led to modern methods of darkroom printing on light sensitive paper that could be fixed or preserved. Their first camera was released in 1888. You press the button, we do the rest, was their slogan. The camera was preloaded with 100 photos worth of film. You would send the used camera back to the company where they would process the film, make prints, put in new film, and send it back. In 1900, the Brownie box camera with roll of film is introduced, selling for a dollar. This introduced the concept of the snapshot and was accessible to the masses. The image on the right is of Ansel Adams holding his first camera, the Brownie, at Yosemite in 1918, the beginnings of an illustrious photo career. Here is a much later image of Ansel Adams in Yosemite from 1942 with his large format view camera, a big step up from the Brownie. The first photos that captured motion and the origins of cinematography were with Edward Muybridge, who photographed a galloping horse in 1878. The shot is at a racetrack where he used strings to trigger 12 cameras. The pictures of Leland Stanford's horse were to settle this bet among rich San Franciscans. Do a horse's four hooves ever leave the ground at once? The answer is undoubtedly yes. In 1931, Harold Doc Edgerton, electrical engineering prof at MIT, pioneered the use of a strobe to freeze motion and capture it on film. For a glimpse at how far we have come, on the left we have the first digital camera made by Kodak in 1975. It was filmless and recorded images onto cassette tape. On the right, you have the first real digital camera, the DCS-100 from 1991, complete with an enormous battery pack and 200 megabytes of image storage. The kit weighed 55 pounds. It was essentially a modified Nikon F3 film camera and retailed for $13,000. The first version of Adobe Photoshop is released in 1990. With the popularity of digital, Kodak went out of business in 2012. Digital cameras today are much more portable than earlier models. There are many options to choose from. DSLR, compact point and shoots, as well as new mirrorless interchangeable lens systems. And then, of course, there's always your phone. Now let's talk a little bit about the basics of photography. All cameras are similar at their heart. A lens with aperture, shutter, and a plane where film or digital media is recorded. Here's a diagram of a digital SLR with the light coming in, hitting the pentaprism mirror, and going through the viewfinder. Here are some of the controls on a DSLR camera. The term DSLR refers to digital single lens reflex and means a professional or amateur camera with an internal mirror and one which you can take on and off the lens. Although you can customize the settings to take photographs in manual, shutter, or aperture priority, on auto setting an SLR acts just like a big fancy point and shoot. Point and shoot cameras are designed for amateurs and are compact and foolproof. The lenses or flashes cannot be removed from these cameras. With just a little bit of photographic knowledge, it is possible to use them in a more manual and less automatic mode. The goal of the point and shoot is usually to keep everything in focus, so it is quite difficult to use them for creative effects.